Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I cannot believe that I am already on episode number 10, which means after tonight, we will be caught up. And I'm bowing because I, I am I am bowing because I hear applause because, guys, I literally got a show that's been on the air for like two months, I think. I recapped every single freaking episode in a matter of like less than a month. I deserve my freaking claps. Anyway, guys, this is episode number 10. Let's just get right into the recap. So we start episode number 10 off on the last note of Taylor being very frustrated and irritated that Corey has not yet made her his wife. Corey says that he's used to having these types of conversations with Taylor and he really didn't want the night to end this way. I totally understand Taylor being upset and irritated, but honestly, it's kind of like you're begging him to marry you and girl, you got to have some self-confidence and have some self-love, girl. There are some things that you should have held off until you got that ring on your finger. And then maybe he would have had some type of incentive to want to marry you. Corey goes to talk to Taylor. She's irritated and she doesn't feel like talking. Jade is here talking to Cheyenne. Cheyenne's like, you know, Taylor's trying to say her piece. And Jade is like, Taylor is basically trying to prove to Corey that she's a wife, that she's wife material. Corey is sick and tired of being pushed and he'll do it when he's good and ready. I don't really like be people being pushed either. And I really feel like Corey does not want to be married. That's why he's not married. Taylor is saying to Corey, all these guys here can commit and you can't. Ma'am, Ryan can't. I mean, he's claiming he wants to get married, but that's, that's lies. That's all lies. Cheyenne says to Jade that it's uncomfortable for her and Zach because they have to co-parent with them. Corey asks Taylor, when did the conversation go left? And Taylor says, because all these guys have been together less time than him and her and he can't commit and then she starts crying and says that it's ridiculous we're gonna make this a whole 20 minutes of the next show because honestly i'm over this conversation taylor's still trying to find out how many more years do they have to be together for him to decide that she's worthy of marriage and she says she doesn't have five years so Cheyenne is regretting speaking up on their relationship because she says Corey never spoke on her and Zach's relationship and she feels that they should have just stayed out of it. So this is what Taylor is saying to Corey behind this door. You know how embarrassed I am to go to the grocery store? I have three kids and I'm like, here I am with no screen. Corey, I know you didn't just say what I'm looking at on my screen right now. What if you got Taylor a promise ring? What? After six years, a house and two children, really three. If a man did that to me, want to give me a freaking promise ring after we've been together all these years, I'm going to promise you, you will never see my face again because I'm not coming back to that house. You can keep that ring. You can keep that ring. That should be an engagement ring. A promise ring? What am I, 16? If he gives me a promise ring, I promise to throw it in the garbage. Like all of the other times that they have had this discussion, it doesn't end in a resolution. Corey says that he's gonna do it when he's ready and nobody can really say anything on that. Like nobody can determine that but him. So Cheyenne is out here with Zach and they're giving Taylor props for finding her voice. Um, Cheyenne, I'm not trying to put Taylor down. I like Taylor. I think she's a gorgeous girl. I just think she should have been putting her foot down and finding her voice about four years ago. She's a little, a little late. And I can hear she's crying behind this door and she says it. She's on this show and she's watching people in love and it's effing annoying because everybody's committed except him, basically. Taylor's annoyed. She gets so annoyed. She says she doesn't care anymore and she leaves the room. So Kaya is talking about how after their fun night, they came home, got everybody pretty much got into this drunk conversation. That's when the marriage talk came up. Kaya feels like that conversation should have been had privately. I fully agree. Also... Um, it kind of took away from Sean. I don't really care for these people as a couple. Okay, I'm telling you right now. You already know. But it kind of took away from Sean and Jade's night. Y'all are there to celebrate them getting married. And this whole time we're focused on why Tori. Tori? Did I say Tori? Yeah, that wasn't a mistake. No, it was. I'm just kidding. Um, why Taylor and Corey didn't end up married at this point. And Kaya says, you know, everybody was putting in their information, putting in their opinion. And it's like, that's a lot of pressure on the both of them. 
Tyler says, but would you want somebody to marry you basically out of obligation because you told them, okay, I need you to marry me? No, the answer is absolutely not. Tyler says marriage is not a gift that you give somebody for being loyal for so many years. And that is so freaking true. So we really are going to talk about this the entire show. Corey says that he contacted Micaiah because he really needs to get down to the bottom of why he feels he cannot commit. So Corey believes that this is going to be the most important session that he has had there yet. Micaiah wants to get down to the bottom of why he's so scared to commit to Taylor. Corey says that he really doesn't have many examples of healthy marriages. Like his dad was out here like a rolling stone planting seeds all over the place. So Corey says that he knows how he wants to do it. He thinks about how he's going to propose to Taylor, but Taylor doesn't believe him. And Micaiah says, to be quite honest, if I were Taylor, I would be very confused. Corey says the biggest thing is that he's not being loved the way he wants to be loved. So Micaiah says to Corey, what can he do to help get the love that he's craving. So Corey says that, you know, get a babysitter, spend more quality time. He says he shows love in the way of having fun. He says basically he wanted to be great teammates when he gets married and he just said if marriage is gonna be like this, in other words, in how it is right now, does he really want it? So clearly, and this is very hard to make clear because they say so many words and they don't be saying that much, honestly. Micaiah says, basically, Corey is looking at the current situation and saying to himself, does he want this to be the way the marriage is going to be? And it, are you going to guarantee me that it's not going to be this way? Is it going to be better than this? And that is the reason why he's having apprehensive. That is the reason why he's have. That is the reason why Corey is apprehensive about getting married to Taylor. Corey says once Taylor dives more into herself, he thinks that it's going to help with all the other issues. So Micaiah says that, you know, you don't, necessarily have to be perfect to be married the whole point of marriage is for basically taylor to feel safe enough that she will blossom within the marriage you know micaiah says that fun looks different when you settle into the peace of marriage basically marriage is not always going to be mother freaking great adventure sometimes it's going to be just laying on the couch micaiah is admonishing corey to see that different as not necessarily a negative thing Micaiah says to Corey, what if she gave you an ultimatum and said, I need a ring or we're over. Corey says right away he thinks about it. Corey says right away he thinks about his children. And Micaiah says, I don't want that for you. Micaiah says that she can see that Taylor is just about to be right there approaching that point. So Corey has a lot to think about. There's only one of two choices, Corey. Corey recognizes that it's not always going to be perfect in a marriage. Corey is just, he's comforting Taylor. He's not necessarily saying, okay, we're gonna get married tomorrow, but he's saying he's learned a lot from Micaiah. Corey lets Taylor know that one of the things that Micaiah was talking about was the fact that marriage isn't gonna be perfect. And Corey is like how he had this perfect ideal of marriage in his head and it's not always gonna be perfect. Taylor says that she sees that Corey has made a lot of progress with Micaiah so she believes they're gonna get engaged and it's about time okay so everybody's chilling and um am I the only one that sighs when I see Dr. Mike <laughs> I always have to say this fast because I'd be forgetting what the hell they said we're doing a little trauma tree and they have little cut out apples and oranges or whatever on these apples and oranges they're gonna write what that trauma is that they want to work on so this is the trauma tree and we're going to put fruit on it and those fruit as I just said are going to be the things that each individual person is struggling with so Brianna opens up to the group right now everybody's giving their roots so the things that have played a role in who they are today but Brianna's thing that she told us was that she was how do I say this for YouTube um when she was younger something that was done against her will was done she opens up and lets everybody know nobody in her family knows so Cassanio lost his grandmother and it really hurt him bad because it happened at a time that was supposed to be the happiest time of his life when he like got to play on his first national football aka soccer team that's when she passed away 
And Kaya gets vulnerable and lets everybody know she was also assaulted at 15. And she always blamed herself because she told this person that she wanted to give her to this person. But they took it against her will. And she always questioned whether it was her fault. And Dr. Mike lets her know that no. If you said no, if you did not want it, then you were definitely R-worded. Okay, y'all got it? Got it. Kaya was saying that it made her feel so strong to be able to be vulnerable in front of those people. Leah was also abused as a child. So Tyler's first set of roots was his, he tried to unalive himself. So that attempt is one of his roots. And Tyler was only 11 years old when he attempted to unalive himself. And Dr. Mike asks Tyler, what would he say to that little boy? So what he tells the little boy is that he's worthy to live and he's worthy to carry on in life. Tyler says to Kate that she heals him every single day. And he tells her that she reminds him that he's worthy to be alive. He said it weird, but that's what he meant. Tyler, I'm about to cry on this microphone in front of all these damn people and embarrass my damn self. You're grateful for her? That's so sweet. Okay. Oh my God, y'all. I'm, I'm Ooh, child. Ooh, child. I ain't gonna cry on the microphone. And Dr. Mike says that he's blown away by all of their work in this workshop tonight. Dr. Mike tells everybody that these roots do not define them. They came from other generations, their parents, their grandparents, etc. Dr. Mike says that in order to heal, you have to identify and vocalize what the root causes. They're excited and Brianna says, who knows what the night is going to bring us. I just hope it doesn't bring you gonorrhea because you know us back in town, right? Anyway. So the girls are over here having some drinks and they get into the conversation of sex. And Leah has been celibate for over a year and she finds it very empowering because there was a point where she could never say no when she was younger. Kaya says that she's the type of lady that she does not get emotional connection from sex and sometimes she just needs to do it. So Leah says, does the intimacy with someone else not mean more to you than just a quick F word, right? And I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Kaya says it could be meaningful with the right person, but she does not form emotional connections with everybody that she's intimate with. Brianna is just like Kaya. Okay, I don't know why she acting like she was different when she says she likes to, you know, do it. They find some folks and they're doing what's called a champetta dance and they're giving their lives. So Brianna's over here finding out who's single and who's not. And now they're picking out men as if they're Ken dolls in a mother freaking toy store. Alrighty then. So Brianna says, how am I Puerto Rican and I don't speak Spanish? And this fine young gentleman here, I think his name's Jonathan. He doesn't speak English. So y'all have to Google translate. Ciao. I can't. Next thing Leah knows, Brianna's bringing them all to the house. So the housemates is what I'm going to start calling them. The housemates are in here like looking back like, what the hell's going on? Corey said they brought them dudes. Jay says she wanted Brianna to go out and have fun, but she thinks she brought the fun to a level 10. So Leah just left her man. He was like seven years younger than her. And she was like, peace out. She went to go to bed. Jade and Sean was like, we're too old for this ish. We're going to bed. Maybe I'm too old for this show because... All this screaming and yelling making me want to smack some damn body, okay? They're here partying with the guys. Anyway, they're asking nasty questions on the damn um, Google Translate. Well, Brianna is. I'm all for having fun, girl. So, you know, do your thing. Just be careful. That's all I'm saying. Mackenzie says, oh, Brianna, do your thing. Just don't. Don't get pregnant. Yes, please do not get pregnant by some Colombian guy the way Leah's dumbass sister did and had that Costa Rican guy. Don't think I forgot. I remember everything. Sometimes you need that voice of reasoning when your mind is like all over the place, okay? Rihanna is about to take this guy to her room and Mackenzie is like, do you think that's the smartest idea? Rihanna called her, I believe she called her Miss Boring Pants. Like, girl, she's just trying to be safe. I mean, you rather be Miss, I don't know, gonorrhea pants, civilist pants, herpes pants. She's just trying to protect you. And they went upstairs. You went upstairs with a complete stranger. I hope he doesn't have HPV because you know men can't be tested for that, right? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brianna is getting it in, in the room with a stranger. And Kaya, you so damn nosy. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya hears a little something something goes up to the door puts a little ear to the door I just hope you don't get pregnant girl okay that's all I gotta say that is the end of the recap we are caught up there's just so many things I have in my mind true crime on Fridays maybe or maybe some special episodes of retro shows we're gonna get back to my retro movie recaps okay because my channel's a recap channel okay I try to be giving you guys diversity because you know 
The monotony gets very boring. That's why it's called Sincerely Tracy, because I'm going to do what I want. OK, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.